From origin to global spread and now to vaccine rollouts, the world has witnessed a lot of change this year because of the pandemic. Recently, I spoke to Dr. Eric Feigl-Ding, an epidemiologist, health economist, and an adjunct senior fellow at the Federation of American Scientists. We discuss what we've learned about the coronavirus in 2020 and also what we can expect in the months ahead. 2020 has been a chaotic, absolutely apocalyptic year and looking backwards of so many things that could have been prevented yet were not done. And I think that's the greatest frustration that we could have prevented so many lives um, and so much suffering had we acted sooner, faster, and with science. But we had very little to any of that. And here we are sitting in one of the deadliest pandemics and facing a really bad surge as we enter Christmas time. As an epidemiologist, what would you say is the biggest takeaway in the explosion of numbers here in the United States and then also in some other parts of the world where they are also seeing huge numbers? I think it's a combination of people being complacent, of people not adhering to public health basic guidelines around masks, which we've been advocating for months, and also that we didn't recognize airborne transmission early enough. This virus is a respiratory virus. In many countries in Asia that recognized it was airborne, got it under control. But we focus on hand washing, albeit it's important, but this was not the main driver of this epidemic. And again, the lack of action from our leaders, the leadership on federal and state levels has just further exacerbated that. Did you think it would be this bad? If we had done what other countries had done, such as, you know, Australia, New Zealand, I think we would have just a very regional, small epidemic had we had contained it. Yet right now we have a raging wildfire. The UK, uh, as you know, has started vaccinating its population. We are seeing the race here in the United States to do the same. A lot of companies are putting out uh, what they are calling effective vaccines, 90% effective or more. With the surging numbers, how long will it take before we start seeing the benefits of the vaccines and, and lower numbers? Yeah, I think the we always say in vaccinations, it's not the vaccine that saves lives, it's the vaccine program that saves lives. And it all comes down how quickly do we roll it out, how much trust do we engender, and how many people actually take the vaccine. Because you can have a 100% effective vaccine, but if only 50% take it, you only have a 50% effective vaccine. And so right now it's so urgent that we not only scale production, but also distribution and the public uptake of it. It is a, it's a win, it's a fight for hearts and minds of people to take it and take it seriously. So in, in terms of our timeline, I'm thinking that it will be the summer before anyone who wants the vaccine can get it readily. And so it will be late spring until the epidemic truly slows down because of the vaccine rollout in mass numbers. Will you and your family take the vaccine? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. The vaccines are absolutely safe and the clinical trials clearly show that. And there's also many different kinds of vaccines being rolled out. And I th I'm pretty certain that these vaccines will be proven safe because if they had not, they would have been stopped quite a bit ago. But I think it's ultimately the vaccines that will save lives only if people take them. So I wanna ask you if you have any predictions of what you think we'll see in 2021 and COVID-19, not just here in the US, but around the world where some other countries, as you did mention, are doing better. And at what point will we see complete normalcy? Yeah, I think complete normalcy won't come until the summertime. Because right now in the wintertime, oftentimes people are gathered indoors for the holidays and it's having very difficulty stopping people. And this indoor transmission with poor ventilation, I think it's actually one of the main drivers during the wintertime. As the spring gets warmer, and people can go out more. I think transmission will also uh, slow down. But the vaccine rollout at the end of the day in addition to ventilating all of our schools and all of our buildings are the key things that will bring it back to normal. And I don't think back to normal will be 
any time cl um, close until earliest February or March. And that's being very optimistic.